嗨，大家好，欢迎收看本期的红酒世界直播，我是 Emma， 我是 Joker。呃，那么在我身边这位嘉宾呢，就是来自法国一八五五四级庄、班尼杜克酒庄的少庄主弗朗索瓦·泽维尔·马洛图先生。呃，下面有请马洛图先生跟我们的观众说一个打个招呼。嗯 ，So Mr. Marito, please say hello to our audiences. So my name is François Xavier Marito, and I'm very pleased to be here today. And that's really a great pleasure to have time to. Uh, present to all your viewers uh, our two wines, um, Braner du Cru and the Luc de Braner du Cru. You will see that uh, the history of Braner du Cru is now quite long, uh, and um, I'm very happy to have time to uh, present our two wines. So thank you very much, and I uh, uh, really appreciate this time uh, and to have the opportunity to give more information to our Chinese friends. You know how China is really fascinating for for us. So thank you very much. Ah, 了不得哈！今天来到我们直播间的这位嘉宾啊，其实还是位少庄主。他现在呢正在和他的父亲，就是帮助他的父亲一起在打理这个酒庄。他今天来到我们直播间，就是想和大家一起分享一下他们家的酒庄和他们家的两款酒。嗯，啊，我们的少庄主，我听说之前是个高材生啊。哇，金金融硕士毕业，然后在法国金融金融界深耕了七八年，啊、呃，怎么突然我们这个少庄主就跳槽来到这个葡萄酒行业了？这个我不太清楚呀、啊，我来问一下吧。呃、uh, ，So you've been in the financial industry for seven years, then what drove you back to wine business? Yes, in fact, I started my career in、uh, in finance, um, first in an investment bank、uh, in France. And after, I decided to continue、uh, with LVMH,、uh, the world luxury brand、uh, group. And in fact, I was in charge of all the financing for for the holding. But、uh, um, Braner du Cru is a family business, and that my father decided to buy、uh, now almost 30 years ago for our family. And、um, so I'm just the the second generation of.、Uh, Of my family, but I really wanted to to write a, a new page for、uh, our family, and、um, so that's why、um, I decided to come back.、Uh, my father gave me、uh, his passion for wine, and I wanted to be also uh, uh, in uh, this uh, uh, company and to get involved in this、uh, sector. Awesome, our Mr. Shao Zhang Zhu. Ah, uh, before that. 金融硕士毕业之后就去了法国投资银行，呃，接着他又去了法国著名的奢侈品巨头路易威登集团，掌管了四年财务。然后因为班尼杜克酒庄是一个家族企业，他作为家族企业的第二代传人，就继承了父亲对葡萄酒的热忱。现在呢，呃，就来到了酒庄，接手了酒庄的工作，想要为酒庄谱写新的辉煌的篇章。哎，我听说啊，其实我们这位少庄主哈、啊，不仅有金融硕士的学位，他其实还在波尔多的葡萄与葡萄酒研究所获得了葡萄酒品鉴的大学文凭呢。啊，他还获得了葡萄酒品鉴的大学文凭，真是厉害了我的哥！然后我们的这个少庄主不仅帅有钱，还是个大学霸。嗯、uh, ，So I want to know, uh, I heard Emma told that told me that you get the, uh. Degree in finance and a university diploma in wine testing ability. So I want to know: Did you get the two certificates at the same time? No. In fact, I started in two thousand. I'm、um, um, get the, my first certificate uh, in two thousand seven for finance, my master degree. And after, when I decided to、uh, come back、uh, in Bordeaux. Uh, in 2015,、uh, I get the the certificate、uh, for the wine testing、um, at the end uh, of uh, June uh, 17, because in fact I wanted, I decided to、uh, add this new diploma because I wanted to have more、uh, technical skills to be sure that、um, I would be able to answer also to more technical questions. And so that's why I decided to did to to do this uh, uh, diploma in analogy and testings.、Uh, after certificates are very important, 
that uh, the most important is to practice and to really see, in fact, uh, uh, the, the evolution of, uh, of the wines and, uh, and also, for example, to leave uh, the, the harvest. Uh, at the moment, that's an important day for, an important period for us because we started the harvest, for example, uh, last Wednesday uh, of this week. Mm-hmm. 看来我们的少庄主确实也还真是了不起虽然两个文品不是同时拿的但是少庄主现在想要为酒庄多做一点事情然后你马上就去考了拿到这个大学文品我现在就想知道了我们的少庄主在他一五年去到酒庄工作
but it's also to be sure that we have the same vision I mean um, that uh, we all make our best to be sure that uh, Saint Julien uh, is more and more recognized uh, worldwide. Um, I have the great chance to be in Appellation, so Saint Julien, which is a small appellation with only uh, 900 hectares, uh, but a very homogeneous uh, appellation. Uh, and one characteristic of the appellation is also that more than 85% of the appellation is classified in the classific classification of 1855. To give you an example, you have 11 classified growth in Saint Julien, mm -hmm. and in the total classification, you have only 61. Mm -hmm. So that's um, for that, um, uh, I'm very very pleased to uh, represent uh, all the chateau of the Saint Julien appe appellation. 圣朱尼安传奇的主席是这样产生的大概就是这样子我刚刚还听邵庄主说他说圣朱莲产区虽然是一个小产区哈但是他们百分之八十五的酒庄都是列级庄这个是非常了不起的哈那么这么一片可以说是风水宝地的地方他的那个风土和同在
啊，我想请我们的少庄主为我们的观众演示一下该如何开葡萄酒。So, Mr. Marito, can you show our audience how to open the wine? Sure. Okay. We'll take. This one. Mm -hmm. That's a very simple thing. So you just open like that. Uh, mm. Just, just the top. It's better to keep. In fact, you have all this. Mm -hmm. It's better to keep this part and just to cut that part. Because mm. after it's nicer oh, on the table. So up. Like that. After put the screw just there. Mm. Up. Like this. And then just put the 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 after you just have to serve. Thank you. Cheers. Cheers. Nice. I hope you have pleasure. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Do you think this wine is good? 这款酒香气非常的浓郁，我觉得这个酒有一点这种黑色水果的香气比较明显，有黑醋栗的香气。然后，嗯 ，So Mr. Marito, uh, how do you think about the wine? So this is a bottle of Branner du Cru 2012, and 2012 is really a vintage that I really like. Um, it's a very elegant and very feminine wine. Um, in fact, since the beginning, that's a vintage that is very accessible. And I think that it's for people who want to start with our wines, 2012 is really a great example. Because even if it's young, you already have a lot of pleasure to drink the 2020. And um, if you want to drink quickly the wines, with 2012, you can do it. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, if you want to age the bottle, you can also do it. I'm very confident with this vintage, and it's not because I've got twins born this year, but it's just because I really think that 12 is really an interesting vintage. So you got twins in 2012? Sure. You like it rather. <laughs> and, uh, and I've got also a little daughter, mm -hmm. and, uh, and is, is, her name is Gabrielle, and it's today uh, uh, anniversary. Wow. So she is today two years old. So yeah, you can see, 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 you can see,他觉得这款酒完全还可以再沉了几十年。那说到这款酒，我品了，我感觉这款酒里面，这款酒应该是让我猜测一下，应该会有赤霞珠。当然了，这里面那么多的黑色果味，肯定有赤霞珠。但是
this wine? So, in fact, uh, at Branier de Cru, we have four different grapes. The most important uh, grape for us is the Cabernet Sauvignon. Mm -hmm. And in this wine, you have 64% of uh, Cabernet Sauvignon. That's always very important for us to have a lot of Cabernet Sauvignon. After, we have 24% of Merlot. The Merlot, we always have a bit of Merlot because we have some uh, clay and limestone mm -hmm. for the Merlot. And uh, uh, why we have a lot of Cabernet Sauvignon is because we have a lot of gravel soils. And after, for the, the, the total blend, you also have 5% of Petit Verdot mm -hmm. and 3% of Cabernet Franc. And all the time, in fact, in our wines, and 2012 is a good example, but the old vintages are more or less like that, you will find these four grapes mm -hmm. with always a vast majority of Cabernet Sauvignon. 所以说这款酒里面就不止赤霞珠所以非常适合种植这些品种既然这个酒是混酿的 So Mr. Marito, uh, can you tell us the winemaking techniques of this wine? Sure. Um, we use, in fact, we use all the modern uh, technologies either in the vineyard or in the vat house. However, the most important for us is to be sure that we really respect the fruit and the fact that we want to achieve something all the time, I, not identical in terms of, it's not possible to produce every vintage the same wine, but it's possible to produce the same style. Mm -hmm. So that's something which is important. But after, uh, we have a lot of manual work and for example, uh, the, for the picking during the harvest, uh, we have uh, end harvest mm -hmm. and one thing which still continues to be very important also is to be sure that we test very often the wines to see a bit the evolution during the aging. Mm -hmm. And for that, you can't just let do a machine. That's not possible. Mm -hmm. If you really want to craft um, a great wines, you really need to care about the wines and um, that's just the human skills for that. And after one thing which is really, really important is that we spoke before about the fact that that was a blend uh, of the four grapes, but that's also a blend of different terroirs that we have in the appellation. Even if we are uh, in the appellation of Saint-Julien, uh, we could say that we have uh, uh, a unique terroir, but it's not a unique terroir, that's really a blend of 15 different terroirs with a blend of the four grapes. And that's all this with also uh, the modern technologies that will make, at the end, a great wines. Mm -hmm. oh, so, yeah, you can. 而且呢他刚刚也说到酒庄其实是以人为本然后是科技为辅虽然说他们在酒庄酒窖里面啊葡萄园里面啊都已经采用了非常先进的现代科技但是像在采收葡萄以及在统编指引等方面他们是会还是
，其实他们是十五种不同风土的混酿。刚刚少庄之夜有提到，他们家的这个葡萄园里面啊，其实是有超过七十个地块的。然后也就是根据这些不同地块产出的葡萄，然后酿出了不同的酒，他们混酿在一起，最终就形成了班尼杜克这样一个酒。其实说到波尔多的混酿啊，呃，这个并不是非常罕见的东西，因为我们都知道波尔多基本上都是靠不同品种的混酿来保持它葡萄酒的一个品质和它的稳定性。比如说，呃，因为它的气候的原因啊，它是不太可能依靠为就是单独依靠某一个品种来酿酒的。比如说哪哪个年份的气候不太好，然后那个呃威尔多突然就长得不是特别好的话。那么这个时候，他们就可以少用一点威尔多，然后多在里面加一点其他的葡萄品种，来维持他们这个酒酒质的稳定。啊、嗯，那既然的话，这个波尔多都采用混酿技术，然后我们喝的这个酒也是用混酿酿造出来的，所以我们喝的这个酒啊，跟那个波尔多混酿出来的酒有什么大的区别？或者说，我们这个班尼杜克酒庄的酒有什么比较突出的特色？ So, Mr. Marito, I want to do the main characteristics of the wine. That's very simple. That's what we call our home signature. Mm -hmm. Our home signature, in fact, that's my father who decided when we bought the chateau in 1988 to implement a philosophy, mm -hmm. and we decided to keep that philosophy for all our vintages. So now, uh, since almost 30 years, we always keep the same philosophy. This philosophy is very simple. It's three main things. First, to be sure that we really preserve the purity of the fruits, meaning that when you, when you smell, when you test the wine, you will have a lot of fruits and a lot of very pure fruits. The second thing is to be sure that in our wines, you will have a lot of freshness, because if you have freshness, you have pleasure when you drink the wines. And after, the third thing is to be sure, we have the great chance to be in Saint-Julien to have really top terroirs, so we want to be sure that we will always uh, mix and have a good balance between the structure, the complexity of the terroir, and the elegance. And that's really what we call the, the home signature, the three elements that you will find all the time in our wines. That's something which is very important for us because you need to expect something for all the viewers, for example, um, who will see this presentation. They will know in the future that when they will op open a bottle of Branner du Cru or a bottle of Duluc de Branner du Cru, they will have, they will expect something, they will have this own signature. Shao张主就已经说到呢，他说他们家的酒有一个标志，有三个标志性的特征。第一个就是果味的纯净度，然后呢就是口感的新鲜，最后就是一个平衡，也就是在结构啊、力量啊、优雅这些特征之间要取得
Uh, that's really when we look at the very old uh, label of Barnea du Cru, you can already see uh, the, the same image with the four crowns. So that's why we kept these four crowns that are really, really important for the chateau.其实这四个王冠跟之前九庄的历史有关系因为我们刚刚邵庄主也介绍说九庄是上世纪的八十年代然后够来的这个够的这个九庄然后之前九庄的之前的主人然后有一个为了代表他们然后这一个协定表这两
然后年纪越大，但是越来越像个小孩子，就童心未泯嘛。然后庄主说，这个我们这个酒也是他放的酒，然后陈年越久，但是呢，他那个清新的口味，今年不改，然后所以非常的相似。看这边好像还有一个酒标不太一样的那个。哦，你是说这个酒的这个酒的酒？对，因为刚刚我们这个邵庄主说他带过来的有复牌酒，哦、所以 is this your second wine? So that's our second wine,、uh, the Duluc de Brunner du Cru. And in fact, why we produce a, a second label? The reason is very simple. It's just because we replant every year one two percent of our vineyard, and、um, on average, our vineyard is thirty five years old. But we know that we need ten to fifteen years to really get the top from the terroirs. When I say the top, it's really all the complexity of the terroir. So that's why we prefer to produce a second label with the young part of the vineyard,、uh, which will have. Less complexity compared to Brunner du Cru, but which will follow exactly the same philosophy, because we consider that Du Luc de Brunner du Cru, the second label, is like the little brother of Brunner du Cru,、mm -hmm. and as it's the little brother, you need to be、um, to have exactly the same feeling when you drink Du Luc de Brunner du Cru and Brunner du Cru in terms of style. You don't have the same intensity, not the same complexity, but you have the same. Philosophy, and we pay really the same attention for Du Luc de Brunner du Cru as for Brunner du Cru. That's a bit Du Luc de Brunner du Cru is a bit an introduction、mm -hmm. to、uh, Brunner du Cru for people who want to discover our wines. So, ah, this kind of full-bodied wine is actually, ah, can be said to be aside from the fact that it's more young. 呃，酿酒的其实它的特点和它的酿酒哲学理念跟正牌酒是一样的哈。他他说到酒庄呢，其实是因为呃，酒庄的葡萄平均树龄是三十五年左右。然后呢，为了让一个，然后他们酒庄呢是会呃，就是以每年百分之一到百分之二的频率来更新他们的葡萄园，因为有些葡萄藤太老了就不太好用。然后呢，他说为了让这个葡萄藤能够。充分的发挥这个风土的优越性，那么你需要让葡萄藤呃扎根非常深，这个时间大概需要十到十五年。对，然后就是，所以因为这个原因呢，他们会用比较年轻的葡萄藤来来酿造呃复牌酒。复牌酒虽然说是没有正牌酒那么浓郁复杂，但是复牌酒，但是它的风格和正牌酒是一样的。呃，可以说它是复正牌酒的一个小兄弟吧。那这么说来，其实这个复牌酒也还不错，嗯、是吧？待会儿我们直播完了也去开一瓶，好啊，尝一尝。嗯。然后过了这么久啊，我刚又闻了一下这个酒的香气，我觉得，呃，跟之前我们刚刚开的时候有一点点不一样。So, Miss Marto, I want to know the whole process for the wine development of your flavor. So in fact, that's an interesting、uh, question, and that's a question.、Uh, the answer will be a bit different、um, depending on, on the age of the of the wine, meaning that、uh, for the moment, for example,、um, with the 2012,、uh, the, the wine has only five years age, and uh, uh, so you have a lot of aromas, for example, a lot of red fruit aromas.、Um, The most important for us is to be sure that you don't have too much of aromas coming from the wood.、Mm -hmm. We really want to respect the fruit and the, the fact that you must smell a lot of aromas coming from the fruit. After,、uh, in terms the, the the tannins of the wine will be、uh, smoother、um, with a bit of evolution, and、um, I would say that you will have a very wide range of flavors. Uh, with evolution,、um, that's something which is very important with the wine. Is that、um, depending on the timing where you drink the,、uh, a glass of the same wine, you will not have the same flavors. And an another thing which is very important is that you can smell some flavors that I will not smell, and that's the same for you. We don't have the same、uh, DNA, which、uh, so. 
that's why I can smell, for example, some uh, um, black current, and you will not smell that, and you will smell some uh, uh, strawberry or some uh, raspberry, and I will not smell this. Mm -hmm. That's really a personal feeling. And uh, one thing which is important is to have a lot of pleasure when you drink the wine. Mm -hmm. That's the most important for us. So this wine, so this wine development is actually quite interesting. Ah, with this wine, in 2012, it's now there are a lot of new wines. And it's been around for five years now, but it's still very young, very young wine. And if you put it down, the wine will get more and more expensive. Then it will develop more and more aromas. 嗯，这样的话呢，其实如果有耐心的话，可以继续等待。嗯，那这个一二年的酒确实不错。然后，但是呢，他们家的酒是不是都说这个？他刚说这个一二年的酒啊，比较年轻还是？对。然后，那他们家的酒是不是看样子是不是比较适合成年的？嗯，好像好像成年前景是非常不错的。啊、uh, ，So what's the aging potential for your wine? That's a good question. Um, globally, we always say that you start to drink a glass of Duluc de Branner du Cru, so the second label, after four, six years. For Branner du Cru, it's more after five, eight years, depending on the vintage. After, for the aging, um, you can age a bottle of Duluc de Branner du Cru for, without any problem, 15, 20 years. For Branner du Cru, the aging is even uh, uh, bigger. Uh, we spoke just before about the fact that we have tested a, a bottle of 1887. Um, I don't say that it's necessary to wait all the time 140 years, but you can really age the bottles. And um, if it's really a great vintage, that has no limit, I would say. Oh. After it's more a question of pleasure that you will have Drinking young wines or old wines. 对，看到这个酒啊，是分两种，就是刚刚我们看到这个复牌酒啊，它成放到五到六年的时间喝就比较好。然后如果想要喝的入口的感觉更好一点，就要再放十五到二十年。那么对于这个正牌酒的话，可以放更久的时间。刚邵龙说他现在还在家里面喝。八六年、八七年的酒，也就是说可以成三十年。他说还可以放更久，也就是说咱们这个正牌酒的成年潜力非常大，还可以放四十年、五十年，甚至。是啊，嗯、我刚听他说，好像他最近还开了一瓶一，就是十九世纪的酒。对。是十九世纪，对，现在已经是，就是说是一百四十多年前了那个酒、嗯。然后他觉得他们家的酒啊，就是如果说是遇到非常伟大的年份的话。嗯就是没有成年的限制，你想成多久成多久。啊，既然这个酒的成年潜力这么好，等一下直播结束了我就买一箱，然后等到艾玛结婚，放个四五十年、一百年，然后等到艾玛结婚的时候送给她。好吧，既然你这样做的话，那我那我也再放个四五十年，等你生完的时候再回赠给你、啊。我们只是开个玩笑，但是刚刚我刷了一下这个。弹幕就是我们有网友问到，就说现在有没有推荐几款比较适合喝的酒？就说我自己也想知道，就是说最近就是哪几个年份值得推荐，然后大家珍藏啊，或者是现在喝，比如说 So Mr. Marito， 呃、uh, ，Would you please recommend several wines、uh, that deserve the to be reserved or several wines that can be that suit for drink right now? So, um, if you want to uh, uh, drink uh, some uh, uh, vintages at now, um, you have some very great vintages for that. For example, the 2012. Uh, if you want to start to drink the 12, you can. Mm -hmm. uh, 13 is also a good example. That's already nice to drink. Uh, after, there are some uh, more, some older vintages, mm -hmm. uh, such as 2008, 7, uh, 4. Uh, to the 2002, that's vintages that are perfect to drink now. Um, after, if you want, if you want to age uh, the bottle, uh, I would, 
I would take the, the vintage 16, vintage 15, 14, um, 2011, uh, 2010, 2009, 2005, and I will stop with 2000. Because after you have also a lot of other vintages, but for from 2000 to 2016, that's a bit the vintages that you can drink now and the vintage that you can really keep in your cellar. Mm -hmm. so, we if 15年的酒就非常的好 so, Mr. Maraito, I want to ask you, uh, in your perspective, which uh, vintage 15 and vintage 16, which one is better? And uh, what's the difference differences between vintage 15 and 16? That's really a, a, a very good question. A uh, very good question. Um, in fact, for sure, that's both vintages which are really outstanding. But they are not outstanding for the same, I would say, for the same reason. Um, if we had to classify the two vintages, I think 16 has certainly something more compared to 15. But it's not the same register. Um, why we think that 16 is a bit better compared to 15? It's that in 16, we had, uh, uh, in fact, perfect weather conditions during the flowering, uh, so in, at the end of May, beginning of June. Uh, we had a very dry summer, which is really perfect for the maturity of the tannins. And after, we had um, just wonderful uh, weather conditions for the harvest, uh, meaning that it was really possible in 16 to uh, pick up the grapes from each plot, from each plot um, at the right time. So that's the reason why we think that 16 is a bit higher, I would say, in terms of quality, even if they are not totally in the same register. And uh, um, to give you an example with the, the vintage 16, we started the harvest the 28th of September and we finished the harvest the 19th of October. That's certainly the longest harvest ever um, of the chateau uh, um, in, in our memory. Um, the difference between both vintages, uh, uh, and I'm sure that some people will prefer in the future the 15 and some other will prefer the 16, is perhaps that the vintage 15 is certainly the most elegant vintage ever produced at Branier du Cru. 16, the vintage 2016 uh, has a bit the same characteristic, mm -hmm. but you will add the fact that you have a bit more of structure. You, you still continue to have elegance, but at the same time, you have certainly more structure. So that's why I think that some people will, pre will prefer the 16 for the, the structure of the 16, and the 15, and some other, the, the, the 15, for the elegance of the 15. But for sure, that that's too great vintages that you must have in your cellar. So, I think that in the past, 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 in the past,
，就是非常顺利。这这是非常，这是对于葡萄做果来说非常重要的一个阶段。然后它的夏天呢非常干燥，这就很有利于像他们的那些什么单宁啊、香气啊这些的积累。然后它的采收期非常的长，也很顺利。庄主说到，就是因为采收期很长，所以他们的酒庄可以，他们是有超过七十个地块嘛，所以说他们就可以，在每一个地块的合适最合适的时间来采收葡萄，这样他们葡萄品质就当然是非非常好。啊，对，确实很多酒评家也这么认为。但是庄主刚刚也提到，就是说一五年的酒和一六年的酒其实也是各有特色，然后一五年出产的葡萄酒是他们酒庄。嗯、呃，这么多年出产的最优雅的葡萄酒，那么相比而言呢，一六年的葡萄酒可能就更有结构感，然后更有力量感。呃，庄主个人认为呢，就是一六年的葡萄酒可能会更好，是他们酒庄自一零年以来最好的年份。那么说到这儿了，我们还是现在看一看这个我们的观众有什么问题，然后现场请我们的邵庄主解答一下。嗯，我看到一个问题，就是有观众在问哈，如果是现在就要开瓶喝的话，那个周伯通是哪个年份的最好喝 ？So our one of the audiences asked you that if he or she wants to open the bottle now, uh, so which vintage do you recommend best? Oh, for today, I think um, if I speak um about young vintages. I think that 2012 or 2013 are really two great vintages if you want to drink now the bottles.、Mm -hmm. If、uh, you want an older vintage, I would take, for example, 2008, 2007, or 2004. That's really three other older vintages that are really, really nice today to drink. 呃，我们邵庄主刚刚说呢，说如果说你想喝年轻一点的酒的话，那么现在开瓶最好开瓶的就是一二年和一三年两个年份。而如果你想就是去找一些老一点年份的酒的话，那么呃零四年呐、啊、这些零几年的这些年份其实是也是比较适合现在开瓶的。嗯，对。然后刚刚也有网友提问问到说这个，呃，想知道酿造这个复牌酒的。葡萄要葡萄树的树龄要比这个酿造正牌的年轻多少？其实就是说，呃，刚刚庄主已经提到，就是说这个酿造复牌的这个葡萄酒的树龄大概就是十到十到二十年，就是新栽的葡萄。那么就是说，就是我们这个酿造正牌葡萄酒的树龄大概是多少？对吧 ？So what's the But what? So what's the age of the wine? Wine that、uh, used to to make the the wine, this wine. So、um, on average,、uh, our vineyard is thirty-five years old. Thirty-five years. Old. And、uh, we can have some old vines, but uh, uh, we don't have vines that are more than seventy、uh, years. And in fact, the reason is that for us,、um, we, as we are making blend,、mm -hmm. we don't have special cuvee for very old vines.、Mm -hmm. um, so,、uh, as I said, on average, that's thirty-five years old, with for sure、uh, young vines,、mm -hmm. because we replant every year one two percent, and with older vines、uh, till seventy years. 也就是说，这个酿造正牌的葡萄酒的树龄平均年龄大概是在三十五年左右，啊、呃，也就是说，它要比复牌要比复牌酒的那个树龄要高出二十到三十年，就是这样子。好，那么，呃，今天的红酒世界直播呢，大概就进行到这里，就快要结束了。呃，我们酒也喝了，天也聊了，最后还是让我们的邵庄主给大家说声再见吧。嗯。Can you say goodbye to our audiences? Sure.、Um, that was really, really、uh, a, a, great, a great pleasure to be with you,、mm -hmm. to have the opportunity to present、uh, Branner du Cru and Du Luc de Branner du Cru,、uh, as I said to our Chinese friends.、Uh, but I really hope that next time、um, we will meet directly in the Medoc, 
Uh, we are open uh, not every day, but almost every day. So um, if you want to come and if you want to visit uh, our winery, we will be very pleased to welcome you. Uh, so don't hesitate. We have a website uh, www.braner.com. You will find all the information and we'll be very happy to welcome you. Thank you very much. 张老师说呢，他非常感谢大家今天收看今天的节目。然后呢，如果但但但是他更期待大家能够去梅多克，去他们酒庄去参观，不要犹豫哦。如果您去了梅多克的话，请一定要写信给他。好了，今天我们的节